have dustbins, keep them in, uh, you throw them in the right places, in the dustbins, or keep them with you and come back with them here on site, on, uh, on camp. And that will be handled here. Otherwise, I wish you the safest visit and uh, enjoy your stay. Thank you. Oh, sorry, just one more thing. You've been given those procures, please go through them. And at the end, we encourage that you leave your comments. Thank you. Do you mind going with us while you're telling us? This is the channel. We'll have a group photo later. Your return on investment. You can go. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> when, when I'm near, I can uh, go. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. But when, when we are far, we know that we can. Yeah, this is the thing. Yeah. Where the other man was at it. I'm carrying my dog. So the challenge is deeper and up there. You man, you give us a so there's going to be a big green here for containing. So, this is a, a project being developed by a private company under private public partnership. We sometimes call that BOT, Build, Operate and Transfer. There is going to be a total of 82 megawatts here uh, in two phases. What we have been able to see today is ironically phase two we have started with phase two which is going to produce 42 megawatts then phase one will produce 40 megawatts so we'll have a total of 82 megawatts for this phase which we have been able to visit today we have a time schedule of commercial operation date of October 2018. In other words, we have like 14 months in which to switch on the, the, the power station. Uh, I've been accompanying the members of National Resources Committee as part of their oversight role. They requested that they visit uh, this station Agago station, our station. Uh, the vice chairman, Dr. Kefa, has been leading this committee. Uh, all 
room of the full committees here. And we are happy that we have seen good progress uh, being, uh, being carried out here. These people will have clean power throughout. Well, the river as far well, is seasonal, yes. Uh, for three months in a, in a year, we have it at very low level. But the design here is such that we have one small machine which will continue running at six megawatts, even if the other machines will not be running. In such a case, should the load in this area, the requirement of power in this area exceed six megawatts, you remember we have a much bigger power station which we are constructing now at Karuma. And this power station is 600 megawatts. Also next year, we hope to start switching on the machines one after another. So we shall be running these two power stations in parallel to make sure uh, that the power remains reliable. Honorable uh, Minister. Now, the government has, is aware of that problem. Uh, we will only move one at a time. Uh, for now, we are going to alleviate the consumer from the connection cost. You know, one of the other things you haven't mentioned is that the connection cost has also been high. But government has negotiated with the World Bank and other donors, other, uh, other financiers, to fund free connection. So now, power will be connected free to these customers in this area and the cost spread over a period of time. So that relief will be uh, will, will benefit them. The other thing is that the two dams, Karuma and the Simba, are done as public projects. Government is the one funding them and therefore Electricity coming from these two stations will be much cheaper. Uh, Isimba is 4.8 cents, uh, uh, Karuma is 5, 5 cents. So if you mix, if you mix the 800 megawatts or so with the others and you do the numbers, you find that tariff will come down. It will not come as down as we would have wanted it, but it is because we still have loan repayment after a few years, then you will see a complete uh, reduction in power tariff. Anything else that you want to pass across that would not happen? People of Uganda have been patient enough, and I'm happy that they've been patient. We've had difficult times. But as you can see, from what you have been able to see, we are building very many power stations. Tomorrow we shall be together, I hope, at Karuma, and you see the marvelous work being done there. So next year we shall be getting relief. We are also doing the transmission lines because we cannot generate power and then have no line to take this power away. So we are doing also that. So every year we shall be improving and uh, our people will get the benefit. I also thank the Committee of Natural Resources because Committee of Natural Resources of, of, of Parliament, because they've helped approving whatever requests we put before them very quickly. That's why we have been able to, to do a lot of things in a very short time. So the future is very, very bright. People should prepare their homes, especially those in this area. They should prepare their homes. You know, this area was not a no-go area for some time, but I'm happy that today we walked through the jungles without any worry. Now it is time to prepare to receive this power uh, so that we can progress. Thank you. Thank you. Can you speak some? Car MP Chivoga East County and Vice Chair Natural Resources Team, okay. Natural Resources Committee. Okay. So, Honorable, on, on this particular mission, what have you established? Well, okay, probably on, on one hand, I, I like to congratulate the people of the area that at least peace has finally returned. We've moved deep in the areas, as you saw, and it was peaceful, and people are back to their normal, normal lives. So that's great for Uganda. 
uh, more about our purpose of being here. This is uh, one of the oversight visits that we do as a committee of parliament on natural resources. And we are keen on establishing what is being done around generation of electricity and to what extent is the project moving on its target. We've been really impressed about what has been achieved and very interestingly in a very short period of time. Uh, the project started last year in January but it's on target to complete next year uh, come 15th October 2018 which is really rare with other projects, probably an element of why privatization is sometimes praised as superior, as superior to actually public delivery of services. Now that's one. The other thing that uh, I found very impressive is that very soon we'll be having another dam here adding to the megawatts that we have in Uganda. Uh, it will be adding 42 and then there's a few other dams also which are coming on board. So very soon we'll be having much much more uh, uh, power generated in excess of what we have. Now the key problem that we have at the moment actually and which you, I'm sure you had coming through in the questions that MPs were asking, we're having power generated but the capacity around evacuating it and transmitting it to where it should go is a little bit shaky or still wanting. I don't think we've heard much about that here and uh, that's the key issue that we are taking back. How is the power that's going to be generated here? What are the plans around it being evacuated? But we'll be having a separate conversation on that with the ministers. Now, the other thing also that we take away from here is that we really need to work more on the rural electrification program so that there is better demand. Uh, rural electrification, electrification program will mean that rural areas can access electricity. More homes can be connected. That is still a problem at the moment. So if we can get more homes connected, then the demand will increase. It's because of that uh, element that the Committee on Natural Resources this year has, has uh, budgeted or included, this financial year, included 20 billion shillings in the budget of RARE to make sure that they can increase, intensify on their uh, connection of homes in rural areas. So those are the main things that we are taking away from here. But I'm really impressed by the quality of work that we have seen here. And hopefully this will be matched by what we'll be seeing tomorrow with the Karuma Dam standards. But we haven't seen that. We, we didn't see that here. There was also something about local content. They are using our local material. In the Karuma, they told us that the materials were poor. The cement, I think, they were importing it or some of it getting from Kampala cement factory. But here they are using our local, our local materials. The iron, the steel bars, the cement. This project is being supervised by Uganda, which is excellent. And we've not seen that elsewhere. Thank you. It started in about um, August of 2015. We've been running approximately two years now. Um, the members of parliament are clearly impressed with our work. We are very happy with our progress. We are happy with the work the contractors have done so far. We are hoping that in October 2018, we may commission or commercially operate the project. Okay. Uh, how much power are you intending to produce by this and yeah, Okay, this HPP2 project is um, a 42 megawatt uh, plant. We have four turbines, or four units rather, Three units are 12 megawatts each, and one unit is 6 megawatts for a total combined capacity of 42. So who are the owners? We have heard of it is a private thing. APE is the developer. APE is one of the entities running under the Maji Power umbrella. Maji Power has um, the HPP2, has the HPP1, has Chikagati project, and HPP3 and 4, which are further behind in terms of uh, progression or... or how far they've gone in construction. They haven't started. We are still in negotiations with government to get those off the ground. 
Um, HPP-1, we're expecting that it will come into line or in, into operations in um, the first quarter of 2020. Okay. Your names, sir? Hi, my names are Kenneth Kaheru. And I'm the project director for so, ARP. There's something about you talked about the challenges and how you're handling them. There are many challenges. I don't recall which ones I had mentioned, um, but I had mentioned some of the financing. challenges being in terms of financing and not so much. We've gone, we've overcome them. Yes, I can mention them as some of the challenges, but we've overcome them. We had a delayed financial closure, so in other words, we had a delay in terms of receiving money, our debt, um, but we did receive it um, eventually. There was enough confidence in us that we are going to deliver this on time. Um, and that confidence has come about because we are very professional. I am not trying to load what is not loadable. We are very professional. You can see the people that are involved in this project. We have um, a cross-section of people from various countries around the world. And we shall deliver in October two, uh, 2018. The cooperation of the people in the area? Because in some areas we find people resisting, such kind initially, of things. Initially there was a level of mistrust, <laughs> but now we are fully on board with them. They are fully on board with us. And we meet regularly with them. Do you have um, the plans of the transmission lines? No, that is entirely under government. Okay. Yeah. So what are you back to?